Dressed in a typical Samsung plastic uniform, the Galaxy Core stands not in the forefront with top-of-the-line specs, but right in the core of Samsung's Android offerings, the mid-range. This is Victor with Phone Arena presenting you the Samsung Galaxy Core. The Galaxy Core comes in both a single SIM and a dual SIM version, and you have the dual SIM one for review. It features a 4.3 inch display, a 5 megapixel rear camera, and a decently snappy processor. But is that enough to survive in a doggy dog world of Android competition, or does this handset need a little more flair? Let's find out. By design, the Galaxy Core is a typical Samsung device, familiar looks and a plastic build. It comes in blue and white. The handset is fairly thin and lightweight too. It is also relatively compact and easy to use single-handedly. There is a single physical home key on the front, the lock key is on the right side and the volume rocker is on the left. The buttons conveniently protrude a bit and have nice travel to them. The micro USB port is located on the bottom of the device and up top is a 3.5mm headset jack. The 4.3 inch LCD display on the Galaxy Core features a mid-link resolution of 480 by 800 pixels. It is not razor sharp and you notice slight pixelization but it has one bigger flaw. The display is bright enough for use indoors but outdoors it's too dim for convenient use. Samsung also saved an oleophobic coating and that means that the screen quickly gets covered in greasy smudges making it hard to read and forcing you to wipe it clean way too often. There is also no light sensor and that means no automatic brightness setting. Still you can easily manually adjust brightness via the notification drop down. On a positive note, color accuracy of the display is high and generally we are pleased with the picture. Viewing angles are good and colors do not deteriorate even when viewed from an angle. The Samsung Galaxy Core runs on Android 4.1 Jelly Bean with Samsung's TouchWiz interface on top. TouchWiz has somewhat cartoony looks but adds some unique functionality to Android. You can add shortcuts to apps straight from the lock screen for quick access. The notification shade has side scrollable toggles for everything that comes to mind and Samsung brings a ton of its apps like S Planner, a music and video player apps and the file manager that we find useful. The phone book is another Samsung TouchWiz creation where you swipe right on the name of a contact to call or swipe to the left to send a message. If you like texting a lot, good news is the Samsung keyboard is one of the best out there. Buttons are responsive, well spaced and large enough. The Samsung Galaxy Core runs smoothly out of the box and that's good news. It runs on an entry level Snapdragon S4 chip with a dual core Cortex A5 processor clocked at 1.5 GHz. There is a solid 1 GB of RAM and Adreno 203 graphics that runs basic games like Tempo Run effortlessly. The handset also features a decent amount of internal memory. There is 8 GB of internal storage and around 5 GB of them are available to the end user. You can also expand memory via microSD cards of up to 64 gigs. There are two browsers on board, Google's stock Android browser and mobile Chrome. Both of them work very well. Scrolling around web pages happens without a stutter and zooming in and out is sufficiently smooth. The Galaxy Core supports both Wi-Fi BGN and 3G connectivity. Other options include GPS, Bluetooth and FM radio. The Samsung Galaxy Core sports a 5 megapixel rear autofocus camera with a single LED flash and a VGA front facing shooter. The camera interface is rich in features. You can select scenes, effects, exposure, white balance and ISO. There is no HDR mode built in but burst shot is there and allows capturing up to 20 images in rapid sequence. Good news is the 5 megapixel camera captures very decent photographs. They do not stand out with anything in particular but they hit all the bases. Colors are not skewed, detail is sufficient and the exposure is accurate. One slight niggle is that the camera is too slow. It takes more than 4 seconds to start focus and capture an image for instance. Video recording maxes out at the low 480p but the actual quality of the recording is satisfactory. Colors do not deviate dramatically, exposure compensation works relatively well and the footage is suitable for casual use. For media, there is a built-in music and video player. The video player supports most popular codecs like MPEG, XVIT and MKV. For music, there are two applications to pick from, the Samsung Music Player or the stock Android Play Music. 
we are content with call quality on the handset. On our side of the line, voices sound clean just a bit on the quiet side. Our callers on the other side of the line also recognize our voice easily, but notice that outside noise gets picked up and there might be issues in noisier environments. The handset only has a single microphone and no noise cancellation technology. The Galaxy Core comes with a replaceable 1800 mAh battery. It lasts as much as your average smartphone, in the vicinity of a day and a half of regular use. There is a lot to like about the Samsung Galaxy Core. It's affordable, it features a dual SIM connectivity, it's got a pretty decent 5 megapixel camera and its performance is smooth. All of that, as we said, in a pretty affordable package. If you're still looking for an alternative though, the dual SIM Acer Liquid E2 comes to mind. That's an even more powerful device than the Galaxy Core at around the same price and it features an even better camera, so why not check it out? And if you don't really count on the dual SIM functionality for your daily operation, maybe you can take a look at the Nokia Lumia 520, a Windows Phone 8 based device that is very affordable and allows you to experiment with a new platform. All in all though, the Samsung Galaxy Core has no fatal flaws. It's a decent smartphone that you can take a look at. And for an in-depth review, feel free to check out phonearena.com. Thanks for watching.